Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here. I want to welcome you back to my Intro to Twine series. And in this episode, we're diving into images. This is actually a feature that's been requested time and time again. And I thought I would just do actually a couple episodes on it. What I'll be doing in this episode is we're going to be covering, I'm going to be covering HTML images. So I'm going to be showing you how you can use these images in your stories. In the next part, I'll be showing you how you can do that, do the same thing with CSS images. And I'd like to also announce that following the completion of the series, which I believe I don't have that many more episodes to go, I'll be creating a new series called HTML for Twine Developers or Introducing HTML to Twine Developers, and that will show you the basics of working with HTML, followed by Introducing CSS for Twine, de twine Developers, and you'll be able to learn how to style your, your HTML elements. And it won't be comprehensive, but it will give you a good ballpark. It'll give you a good idea of how you can create some cool visual effects. Then we'll follow it up with introducing JavaScript to Twine developers, and that will show you how you can manipulate a lot of the part elements of your story to make your stories dynamic and feel much more like a game as opposed to, say, static text. We're all done with that. Then I'll pick, pick back up where we left off in this series and continue covering the other two formats in detail. Well, as you can see, we have a lot and a lot to cover. But before we dive in, you'll notice right here I am working on Twine. And this looks all nice and familiar, but something is different about this. This is actually an app now. You can see here, this is our the same Twine 2 that we all love and use, but it's now in an app format. If I go to my dock here, you'll see it has its own icon. And it's a nice, nice, yeah. I actually, I wonder if that's a nice high res icon. I'm not too sure, actually. In any case, this was actually released with Twine 2.04. And I'm just going to close this right now. And if you come over to this page here, and I'll put the link in this notes, you can come down here and you can download these versions of Twine that are now encapsulated in an executable so that you can run it as an executable versus running in a web browser. This is still very beta. And the developer of this recommends you using the web develop the web tool for now, but this is something you definitely are going to want to use sooner than later because it runs into the whole issue of local storage, where if you are like if you're like myself, where you run multiple browsers, you may ultimately have multiple versions of your story running as well. So you can see here, and this is the link here up here. Again, I'll put that in the, sh in the notes. And you'll see we have all these links right here. So it has Linux, Windows, and OS 10. If you're confused what these numbers mean, this means the, the bits of your operating system. Linux 32 means if you're running a 32 version of your operating system. Linux 64 is a 64-bit version of your operating system. Same with Windows and Windows 32 and 64. Mac, right now, they're all in 64-bit. If you have any questions about whether your operating system is 64-bit or not, you may want to check to Google to determine how you can find that out. I'm pretty sure Windows seems mostly 64 these days, but definitely do a Google search just to make sure. I'd say for the majority of you, you're going to be downloading the Windows 64 version. So that's this. This is a nice little feature. But again, this is beta. If you're working on something that's crazy important that you have a release date for and you don't know, you don't want it to get sort of corrupted or what have you, then don't use this. So I'm going to close this now. And we'll fire this back up. Here we have our derelict story again. And in this case, I'm going to put an image here. And I've rolled it back from the last episode where I was working with arrays. I'm just still going to keep working with data maps. And what I want to do is I want to add an image here. And I already have an image already queued up. I just did a, a quick search. And if I open up this images folder, you'll see it's 86p-036. This is something I grabbed from NASA's website. And this is just showing the Mir space station. It's a very small image. But let's just say this was something I was interested in using. To do this, I would use an HTML element an HTML tag, excuse me, and this is called the image tag. And this is something I'll be covering in my HTML series. But here's something to whet your appetite. An HTML tag and all tags will start with this less than sign. 
and then you provide the name of the tag. And for the case of the image, it's IMG. You can do it uppercase or lowercase. I prefer lowercase. And then you would close it, and that's the end of your tag. Previous versions of HTML required you to put this forward slash before the greater than sign. Because for the most part, a lot of tags in HTML are like this. You would have a div tag, and this is an opening tag, and then you would put a closing tag. And all the inf all the text inside of here is then within that, within that element. For the image tag, it doesn't have a corresponding closing tag. So this right here, this forward slash greater than sign is equal, is just shorthand for doing this. But with an HTML5, they just say this is stand this this is it, the closing tag here is not necessary for the image element. This image has a few attributes, and the first one is the source attribute, and it's src equals, and then you put your quotes. And really, that's all you need for this. There's a few other attributes as well, and I'll cover the source in just a moment. You can have the width element this tells you how wide your image is going to be so I can come here and in this case I can find out I can do 320 like so and then for the height I'll do 211 it also provides an alt attribute and the alt attribute is for text to display if your image for some reason is held up this is really good for screen readers and should always provide an alt tag for your images especially with twine we're working with a system now that is could it, we're working with games i should say that is that are really accessible to people who may have some visual problems and they can have screen readers to read this and if your image doesn't display and it's important to your story those you may be walling off part of your story to your audience so you always want to have an alt tag there so that screen proper screen reading software can parse it in provide that visual or explain what this image was representing. So I'll just put a derelict space station. So now we want to actually display our image and we're going to use this through the source. And the source accepts two types of values and it accepts a URL, whether it is an absolute URL or a relative URL what is the difference between them and what is a URL? Okay, let's open up Safari here and I'm just gonna type Google. HTTP, Google, like so. And you'll see here, this right here is a URL. This is the location of the resource that we're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for Google and so forth. So you can put a URL to your image and that image will be displayed. So this is an image here. I'm going to open up my development tools here. And let's open up the inspector. I wonder if this is SVG or if this is an actual image here. So this is an image right here. I can click on that and you can see this is the Google logo. So let's get the actual URL for this. And you can see it's right here. That's the full URL of the image. So if I come over here and I put in the, the image, you can see it shows up. So let's go back to Twine. I'm gonna put now this URL like so, and now the Google image, the Google logo will appear in the story. Let's try this out. There it is, it's not exactly perfect. You can see what's going on is I put in the dimensions for my image like so, and it's squishing Google. Let's get back. So I'm going to open this up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this width and height, width and height, width and height attributes. And now we can play it, and you can see this properly is the correct width. The, the The image scales itself. So why would you want to put a width and height? It all has to do with how quickly the page renders. By providing the correct width and height, the Google the the browser doesn't have to guess, and by doing that, you're saving work and it makes, it makes the page load faster. But you don't necessarily have to provide those. I'm gonna put it back though. As I mentioned, this 
is an absolute URL. One of the benefits of working with an absolute URL is now I can pass my story around and I don't have to worry about in including images with it. People will just be able to see, as long as they have an internet connection, they'll be able to determine, they'll be able to find the location of my images and my images will display. Absolute URLs can also be associated with the file system as well. Let me give you an example of that. I'm going to load up my desktop and I'm going to go into my story. Here's my image right here. I'm going to get the absolute URL of my image and I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to play this, and here's our here's our space station. Although I seems to have gotten the I've gotten the the width and height messed up. So here we go. Here's our space station right here. And you can see this is another absolute URL. This is the exact location of this image here. But there's a problem with this. If I give someone my story and I'm still using this absolute URL, what's going to happen is that it's not going to work on their computer because they may have a different setup. For instance, if I pass this to a Windows computer, this isn't going to resolve since we have different file systems. Also, Windows uses the backslash instead of the forward slash, such as such that that Mac Mac uses for its OS. So it's going to basically it's not going to show an image or you'll get the alt you'll get the alt tag in its place. That's not exactly ideal. Again, you can upload your images to an external server, but this also causes the problem of requ this requires an internet connection for your story. If you give your story to someone and their connection goes down, they decide to read your story, what happens is again your images don't render. Again, that's not ideal. What you can do is package your images with your story and pass them around. And to do this, you're going to be using not absolute URLs, but relative URLs. Let's check this out. I'm going to open up my desktop here, and we're going to look at this file structure here. Here you can see this is tutorial. I have something called images, where my image is stored, and I have my story. This is the Twine story I'm currently editing right now. I don't want to use an absolute URL, but I do want to fetch this image that's stored in the images directory. How do we do this? Well, we do this by relative URLs, as I mentioned. Basically, the way the relative, the way this image is found is relative to where the location of my story file is. So in this case, I'm running, the browser's running this. This will be, let's think of this as the root directory. So we want to get an image over here. Well, let's think of it more. Let's take it from a base, easy, easy way to fetch this. I'm going to copy this image. What happens if we include the images with this? I tend to not do this. The reason is I like to keep my file system organized so I can find things. But if you include it in the same directory as your story, you don't have to even provide anything. You just have to delete all this stuff and provide the name like so. And this will work. But you'll notice something interesting. If I play it, it doesn't show the image. And why is that? Well, this is because this is within this Twine browser, this app. If you showed it on the web stuff, on the website, you wouldn't be able to see it also. You have to actually load this in a browser from this location, and then the image will appear. Here it is, and it doesn't. What do you know? Let's figure out what's going on here. Let me publish this. I think that's what I didn't do. And we'll try this again. And there's my image. And right there, you can see a real 
disadvantage for me doing this. And that's because you can't preview your story, your images within Twine, because Twine won't know where to look for that image. So you have to publish your image every time, any time that you want to see it. So in a way, you're working a little bit blind in this regard, and you're not seeing where your images are located. I'm guessing what's going to happen is they're going to make a feature maybe that will include images for you. But for now, you either have to do this relatively or you can do it absolute. Relative is probably the easiest way because you don't have to worry about uploading files to a server. You don't have to worry about providing an internet connection to your to any people who are reading your story. or And you don't have to worry about your images being somehow deleted off that server. So you've seen how you can find one image here. How do we find an image in another directory? Well, what we're going to have to do is, since we're, our browser is starting here, we're going to have to say, OK, browser, I want you to look up. Go up a directory, and then go down a directory. How do we do that? Well, there is something in browsers where we use dot dot. If I type right now, I am in the images folder. If I put CD, which means change directory, and I put dot dot, that means go up a level. And then if I put change directory images, that means go down into the images directory. It works the same way here. I want the browser to go up, and then I want it to go back down. So let's open up Twine, like so. And now I'm going to tell this. We're going to say dot dot to go up. And then I'm going to put a forward slash. And I'm on, again, this is Mac. For Windows, I believe you would put a backslash. It's, I haven't worked with a Windows in a long time, so your mileage may vary. And then I'll put images like so. And so this is telling the browser to look up, then look in images, and then you can find the image right here. And that is a relative URL. I'm going to have to publish this and let's see, whoops, let's see the result. Before that, yeah, we have that here. And there it is, right there. You can see the image. And if I open this, let's open this up in a new window. You can see tutorials, image, and the image name, like so. Now this has some disadvantages as well. If for any reason you move this story, say over here, now you've broken your images. It's going to say look up and what happens is the browser would look up into this directory and then it won't find the images subdirectory. So that's something to consider as well. Also, you're going to have to be packing all this together and if anyone messes again with these subdirectories, they could potentially cause your story to break. But in a lot of ways, it's much easier than working with servers or uploading files and so forth. So for the time being, until the Twine folks come up with a way of including your Twine images with the actual program of Twine so that you can pass it around or it compiles it all together, I highly suggest you use relative URLs.